because uh, they said we have a short time want to start with uh, I think two main points that it's critical or important uh, that guys like you that come to visit Israel and understand the uh, current situation in the region I think that's the two main lessons that you have to take with you home and uh, that's the uh, as I see the key aspect of uh, our current challenges uh, in the region I'm sure that there is a lot of other uh, points and issues that uh, we can raise, so I uh, will leave maybe a few minutes also for, for question <coughs> and uh, Q&A. But uh, I understand that this is not your first day in Israel, no? Uh, yeah, you, you three, three, four days. In. Three, four days, you visit the borders. Uh, I'm sure you heard a bit about the history uh, of the region, the history of State of Israel, the Israel the conf of the conflict between Israel and our neighbors. And I think, uh, in, a, in a nutshell, what you have to, to understand that at the last uh, 30 years, let's say, uh, uh, maybe 40 years, from the end of the 70s, early 80s, Israel took uh, steps uh, on uh, understanding uh, that uh, we must uh, take risk on this region, try to find uh, a compromise uh, formula uh, with uh, our neighbors. So we withdraw practically from uh, uh, Sinai Desert during the peace agreement with uh, Egypt, withdraw from uh, 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 Lebanon, uh, with, uh, the, the security zone in Lebanon, we draw from 40% of uh, uh, Judea, Samaria, the West Bank, we draw from 100% of Gaza Strip. Parallel to these uh, steps during the last 40 years, we saw that uh, our main ally in the region at during the time, Iran, uh, the uh, uh, extreme uh, uh, religious uh, Shias uh, uh, took the the country, uh, the the Ayatollahs. We saw what's happened in Turkey, the second ally on the region uh, for Israel. Uh, we saw the Erdogan, the the direction that he's uh, taking during the last few years. And uh, we saw uh, what happens in the Arab Springs. We saw what's happened uh, here. That bottom line, I can say that people, most the people that surround us, if you take this point, you know, uh, uh, 5,000 kilometers uh, surround us, uh, uh, we see more and more people adapt ideas from the 11th century and uh, practice and know how to use weapons of the 21st century. And this gap is the name of the game of uh, this region. Uh, so two main challenges that we face now, and uh, that's what, uh, as I said, you have to take it uh, uh, with you. First of all, what we see in the Middle East is the collapse of the arrangement that uh, established the, the region post uh, First World War. The First World War, post or during the, 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 the First World War, we saw what we call Sykes Picot uh, uh, borders, Sykes Picot uh, arrangements. And practically, that uh, arrangement that create state uh, in this region uh, is collapsing. It uh, took 100 years. It's quite nice and well. Uh, uh, you know, we saw in the uh, Soviet Union that the arrangement took uh, less time, but. Uh, 
practically uh, when we see there is a four, let's say, nations here in the Middle East, in the region. There are the Iranian, there are the Turks, there are the Egyptians, there are the Israelis. All the others are kind of coalitions, families, tribes, uh, arrangements that create during most during the, the post uh, uh, First World War. And now we see all this region is shaking. And the main challenge is to understand that borders in the Middle East that was that w was exist during the last 100 years will not be the same borders in the next 100 years. And I know that I say something big, something maybe some of people think ridiculous, but I think this is our main challenge of rethinking about that because what we see mainly in Europe that they are uh, uh, I say uh, believe or, or, or try to to achieve the stabilized situation that uh, was till 2011-2012 uh, the uh, when it started what we call the Arab Spring and uh, we pay for this uh, willing, we pay a lot. We see hundreds of thousands of people killed in this region because of the idea fix of holy borders, <laughs> that, that the, the previous borders, and we see a uh, spin-off of this concept that millions of refugees has to leave this region. And the, uh, some of them try to find new life in Europe. And this has a huge influence on the European politics. So things that happens here in this region, because of the idea fix of keeping the borders as it was, that not reflect the ethnic borders, but also, I can say, s in some areas, artificial borders. Uh, uh, create huge challenge on the free world. And I think the first step of new thinking, of new understanding, of uh, deep understanding that we need to rethink about the borders on these regions happens when uh, President of the United States recognized the Golan Heights as a part of Israel. This is an a important step to Israel, but this is a huge step to the region and a huge step for the free world. Because this is the first time that the superpower of the world, United States, understand that to create stability on the region, we have to rethink about the borders. The Golan Heights is 1% of what we called, or used to call Syria. It's not really Syrian country. People kill each other there. You know, there is 600, 700,000 people who died in the last seven, eight years. Two thirds of them lost their homes. This is not a r Syrian people. This is artificial idea. This is only on the maps. But there is a Shias there. There is Sunnis there. Uh, 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 there is few uh, people that not really. And this is a great example how we thought things was post First World War, and how we have to think about the the future post the Arab Spring. <coughs> so. Borders is the name of the game. Borders will be the challenge on this region. We see what's happening in Libya now. Tell me you, you can tell me, what do you think? There is a Libyan people 
There's one state, one people, one nation that's called Libya? I wonder, I don't think so. That was a state uh, in the 20th century, but what we see in the second quarter of the 21st century, things will change. And we have to think about what has to be the next stabilize uh, uh, um, uh, or, or balance uh, uh, points in this region. Second key aspect, more familiar, I believe that you heard about that, that what we see here in the Middle East, first time, a changing of the idea how, what is war? We used to be, uh, we used to thought that war is that army fight against army. We saw here, as I said, people, a lot of peoples in the region, adopt ideas uh, from the 11th century and as an axis to a weapons of the 21st century. And that's created a new situation that we see uh, that war is focused and mainly focused on civilian population. We see Israel facing in a challenge in the south, in Gaza uh, Strip, after we withdraw from Gaza, in the north, in Lebanon. In Gaza Strip, we have around, I'm uh, assuming or, or uh, estimating as a 20,000 uh, uh, rockets around. In the north, we have 200,000 rockets and missiles that focused on Israel. Last night, or, or, or the day before yesterday, first time Syrian army shot air missiles to the Golan Heights. That's mean that we face a situation that kind of an, uh, mixed between army and civilian people. In the morning they are working in agriculture, in the evening they are soldiers. They uh, 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 use weapons, I mean missiles and rockets, that most of them located inside urban areas, and they shooting missiles and um, rockets to our, to the free world urban areas. This is total new way of thinking about fight. And we are not talking about few missiles. Because when you see <coughs> the weapons that the, those people, you know, Hezbollah in the north, uh, that they have in Lebanon, for example, 200,000 rockets and missiles, that weapons is the closest conventional weapons that can create an effect that is the closest or similar and somehow to a non-conventional weapons. Because all of these weapons is focused or mainly focused to a civilian areas. So this is our second or, 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 or next challenge or, or second point. And uh, as I said, we have a lot of other aspects that is uh, unique to this region, that start in this region, and mainly in the next decades or after, you can see it more and more in other areas in the world, or in the Middle East, this thing, uh, bad direction will stop. And we must change this, uh, when the, the uh, threat is uh, small, is, uh, we can manage it before we have to pay a, a huge price for that. So sorry for make some uh, 
uh, depress uh, aspect to our short conversation. Uh, I'm sure you will find a lot of time to talk about Startup Nation and the great things that happens here, but because you're coming from military background and you, I'm sure you, 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 you will stay uh, uh, on in this on uh, those directions so I try to to introduce uh, some of the as I say key uh, points that I personally privately think that uh, this is uh, our uh, current challenge so please uh, if you have any questions or um, so you mentioned that the US recognizing the Golan Heights you mentioned that the U.S. recognizing the Golan Heights was a huge step for Israel in the right direction. I was curious in your opinion, are there any other borders um, in, in your perspective that, that the superpowers like the U.S. should recognize in order to continue to push Israel in the right direction? Okay, I understand that uh, you ask uh, uh, that uh, U.S. recognize uh, Changing borders or Israeli sovereignty on the Golan Heights, and if I think that uh, the U.S. has to uh, uh, recognize other areas, uh, uh, tell you uh, uh, our uh, main challenge is our uh, uh, eastern borders, uh, our border with. Uh, um, what we call uh, Judea Samaria, uh, West Bank depends. Uh, you know, every uh, quotation is uh, also as a political. Uh, as every topic as a political uh, uh, point, but uh, I think uh, uh, when we are talking about the uh, uh, the West Bank, yes. Also, you have to understand. Uh, the current situation there. The West Bank, I want to split the region to <coughs> three areas, if I can say. 40% of the area Israel withdraw uh, from, from around 40% of the area through the agreements, the Oslo agreements with the Palestinians and the uh, the steps on uh, on this agreement. On those 40%, around 95% of the Palestinian population are lived on that. We also withdraw from 100% of Gaza. This is very uh, a complicated situation because Gaza, we have a uh, concentration of uh, Palestinian people, but on the, when you look on the map, or, or uh, 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 physically, there is no uh, uh, direct uh, link between Gaza and, and West Bank. Uh, two separate territories. Back to the West Bank, to the Judea Samaria. Uh, when I say 40% is under Palestinian control, 60% today is under Israeli control. The 60%, if you uh, uh, want to split it around 15, 1, 5 percent of the area is uh, uh, occupied by uh, Israeli settlements. Uh, things are changing on the ground in the last 50 years. Uh, the Israeli population uh, on, uh, on this uh, area, it depends if you quote the Israeli people who live in Jerusalem by own the Green Line, what we call. We have around 250,000 Israelis uh, uh, in Jerusalem, in the, what we call East Jerusalem, around 450 uh, Israelis in the West Bank. That when we look on the maps, it's 15. Uh, I, I take 15 as a, you know, also area that they can develop. Another 35, perc 45 <coughs> percent, as I said, 40 is Palestinian, 15 is Israeli settlement, and 45 is security zones, is military security zones. When we 
see what's happened after Israel withdrew from Gaza, that Gaza became an uh, uh, Iranian base to shoot m missiles or, 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 uh, or rockets on Israeli population. What we <coughs> cannot say can effort in the south, for sure we cannot effort on the West Bank. Because when you took Judea, Samaria, West Bank, and you look on the maps, the, the, the um, gap between the Mediterranean Sea and the border in some areas is around 15, 20 kilometers. How much is in miles? Uh, nine miles. So you cannot uh, uh, key and 75% and of our population is surrounding those areas. So bottom line can tell you that I cannot see in the 21st century a compromise between people that will include evacuation of towns, villages, settlements. And this is the third issue that we have to understand. Israel redrove from Sinai <coughs> desert and evacuate the population mm, during the early uh, 80s, end of the, nine, of the oh, end of the 70s. There were 3,000 peoples there. Then Israel redrove from Gaza Strip and evacuate the uh, Israeli population there, Israeli uh, uh, settlements. There were 7,000 people. We cannot take this idea that maybe work on 3,000 people and 7,000 people and adopt it and implement it on hundreds of thousand people. That's the expectation of the Palestinian. And I cannot see that mm -hmm. this idea can work. So when you ask me about uh, changing borders and mm -hmm. reflect the, 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 the facts on the grounds and the what we call the ethnic borders vis-a-vis -vis the geographical uh, uh, borders or vis-a-vis -vis the, pol the political borders, it has to be reflected then I think that when we are talking about future arrangement on the, the, the um, uh, uh, <coughs> settlement aspect, I cannot see in a situation of evacuation of uh, people. Then we have a discussion about security arrangement. When we see what's happened in the Middle East, when we see what's happened, and I said it and I said to say it, what's happened on the Palestinian areas, when we see the ideas uh, and when we saw what's happened in Gaza Strip when Israel withdrew, so we have, uh, 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 as I said, uh, uh, um, a big challenge about the borders and what's ha where have to be the, the border in uh, uh, our east border between Israel and Palestinian. And for sure, uh, as I said, that uh, U.S., uh, I believe, has to recognize uh, that also in this area, things change. And there is a facts on the grounds that we have to deal with. Sorry to. Okay. Uh, so sort of going off that with their with uh, certain uh, left and right boundaries to what Israel can compromise, um, what can Israel do to achieve uh, some semblance of peace with the Palestinian population? I think we have to. Uh. You, you ask what, what, what uh, you know, maybe you, you, you will repeat and I will repeat today. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, what uh, if, we, if uh, resettlement is completely out of the question, what, can't, what steps could Israel theoretically take, if any, to uh, achieve peace with the Palestinians, yes. if that's possible? What what the steps that Israel has to achieve to, to reach uh, peace with the Palestinians? Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, to do uh, uh, all what we can to uh, 
uh, find or to understand if there can be a PC or not. We have no uh, um, um, I would say we cannot afford to lose opportunities see, from the Israeli point of view. But we have to uh, understand or, or uh, uh, as they say, um, <coughs> we, we have to understand that our risk management formula in 2019 is a different risk management formula that we had in 2009 because things change in the region. Uh, so, first of all, we have to see uh, if there is uh, 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 what we can help and what the world can help to stabilize the economic situation at the Palestinian areas <coughs> in uh, 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 in the West Bank, the Palestine PA, and in Gaza. I think that we need to uh, recover uh, or uh, rebuild Gaza, but as a condition, as a precondition to rebuild Gaza, we must demilitarize Gaza from rockets and missiles. That must be a strategic condition, Israeli condition, but I think also free world condition, as, as we, uh, oh, here's my friend, will change, as we uh, um, uh, ask, you know, about demilitarize uh, Syria from chemical weapons during the war, the same idea has to be demilitarized Gaza from uh, missiles and rockets uh, 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 as a precondition and condition to rebuild and help pa a Palestinian uh, economy. Then we have to see if we can find a new balance point between us and the Palestinians. I believe personally that also has to be involved the Jordanian uh, in uh, uh, this uh, arrangement, and uh, we have to to uh, uh, try to to influence or, or convince the Palestinian that both sides must compromise. It means not only Israel has to compromise, but also the Palestinian has to compromise. And the main compromise that the Palestinian never adopt, and this is the key issue, and that's I think is uh, you know the name of the game. Palestinian, and I said that I'm said to say that never recognize idea of two state for two nation. They recognize the idea the pragmatic part of the Palestinian, they recognize the idea of two states. What I mean? A Palestinian nation state beside two nation states in Israel. Because they not recognized till today. We are dealing with them uh, more than 25 years from Oslo Agreement, but they never agree to compromise for two nation states, live side by side in a peace way. They said Palestine has to be a nation state, the homeland of the Palestinian, but Israel has to be a state that split the, the, the collective rights, uh, the national right between uh, uh, Jews that live there and Arabs, Palestinians that live there. And this is a non-starting uh, uh, idea. So, uh, finalize or, or finish, you know, when we were here in 48, we established our uh, uh, Jewish state after 2,000 mm -hmm. years of uh, a situation that we were a nation, a community without sovereignty. We were here only 600,000 people. Today we are 9 million, and uh, even the, there is a lot of challenges, Bobo, 
The time is uh, over. Uh, the time is over. <laughs> I think our situation much better than it was 70 years ago. So thank you very much to listen to me and uh, hope to see you again somehow. Thank you very much. Thank you.